You guys are filled with God's gifts and talents. He not only made you handsome and beautiful and wonderful in every way on the outside, but after he created us, what we know about God is that he filled us full of his gifts and talents. And they were, yes, for us to enjoy in life, because they do bring great joy. So if you have the ability of you know, hand-eye coordination, you can hit a baseball, have a great time. But really, that ability with hand-eye coordination is meant to be shared so others might enjoy it, so that others might see through you and you might glorify God in your ability. This morning, uh, Jesus has this incredible parable called the parable of the talents which is all about how you and I are being called by Jesus himself to invest those talents and those gifts in others and he wants them all invested right it's incredible how, how worth how, how much worth do our gifts and talents have well Jesus was trying to tell us you know one talent in Jesus day was worth 20 years of wages and he expected that he gave that money to the first person he gave him five talents that's 100 years of wages and he wasn't to possess not one not one dollar but invest everything in others for God so that God might be known on all the world and abundance and blessing might be experienced by all of us isn't that incredible? It's a powerful but very simple message this morning again from Jesus. I want to talk about that a little bit. I want to talk about how we are all talented and gifted in our own way. We all have unique talents. We all can't stand up and sing like Tiffany. That gift of your voice is sheer gift. She shared it all with us this morning. She invested it in you today. And we were blessed by it. That's the kingdom way of what Jesus is teaching us today. But then Jesus also teaches us, and Paul teaches us, that there are gifts and talents that we all share in life, we all have in common, like faith, hope, and love. But one thing for sure is, is that we're all gifted and talented beyond our knowing and all of those gifts and talents have a worth that's indescribable, they're priceless. Sometimes we say, well, you know, I don't know if I have any gifts or talents to share or to invest. I love a little story, a friend of mine who lives in New York City, we all grew up in North Dakota together in Devil's Lake, but he, he lives in the Big Apple. One day he was, he called, we talk on the telephone frequently, and he shared with me that one day he went for a walk in Central Park, and uh, that day there was a balloon salesman, and he would, came and he started filling up these balloons, you know, with helium, and he filled up a yellow one, and then he filled up a, a red one, and then a blue one, and then a, a green one, and people were gathering around to buy the balloons, and uh, so was my friend. He went over to get one and for his kid, and, and he said, all of a sudden, this little African-American boy came running up to the balloon uh, salesman and said, if you fill a black one, will it go up too? And the salesman said, you know, it's not the color of the balloon that makes it go up. It's what's inside the balloon. What makes you special and what lifts your spirits in life is what's inside of you. And that's your gifts and your talents. And those gifts and talents, they help us to enjoy life with God's abundance and while when we give them away to others and invest them life doesn't get any better it's full it's how to live a fulfilled life well I want to talk about 
the fact that, you know, God and Jesus is calling us today to give away all of our gifts and talents. Don't worry. You invest them and you double that investment, he's going to give you more to share. We'll never be wanting. That's what Jesus also assures us of. Be daring in investing gifts and talents and others. Let's just talk about though some of the gifts and talents that we hold in common. Faith, hope, and love. Now, quickly, is there something more important in life than faith? You know, God has faith in us, gives us his faithfulness. I don't know. And sharing that faith with others, that makes such a difference. I want to just say quickly, uh, I, I was thinking about how someone has shared the gift or talent of faith in my life and what a difference it made. And I, when I started thinking about that, I started thinking about my godmother who is Mildred Nelson. And uh, I grew up in a town, a small country church. And, uh, you know, we always went to church. It was like milking the cows. We didn't decide on Saturday night whether we were going to go or not. We just went. And every day, every time we went, uh, my godmother, I can remember, came up behind me and she would be so quiet. And she'd tap me on my shoulder and I'd look up. and I thought she was a hundred years old. You know, she had some bluing in her hair and a little bun in the back and a plain dress. She was only really 35. <laughs> and every day she was so kind, she'd just kind of lean down and whisper in my ear. And she, she would say, I'm praying for you. <laughs> I can't tell you how when she was sharing her faith with me, the difference that that made. Knowing that I counted and mattered, that she was praying on a regular basis for me in life gave me strength. Now does sharing or investing faith in others make a difference? Yes. And it can be done so commonly and so ordinarily. Well, how about hope? How about that gift of God for us? Is that important? We can't put a number on how important the value of hope. We can't live without it. I was thinking just how hope important it is and how sharing the gift of hope is so important. There's a little story I like about a fellow who's out walking in the park and there's a baseball field there, somebody practicing their hand-eye co coordination. There's a right fielder and he walks up to the fence and didn't want to disturb him but just says, son, what's the score? And the, the, the little right fielder said, well, it's 17 to nothing. And so the guy said, well, it doesn't look so good for you then, does it? And the little boy looked back at him and said, it's not so bad, we haven't been up to bat yet. <laughs> now you understand, don't you, how the world wants to rob us of hope? And how important it is to invest hope in others? It's what keeps our motors going. It's what gives us bounce in our step. It's what gets us through the most difficult days of our life. It's to be invested in others. Love, the greatest gift of all that God gives to us. We're to share it. He gives it to us. We're supposed to invest it in others. A little story about a grandson who had a grandpa who wanted to teach him about the great expanse of, of God's love for him. They went on a mountain hike, and when they got to the top of a mountain, let's say Long's Peak in Colorado, he took his grandson, he said, hey, I want you to look out into the horizon north and you can see all the way to Montana. He said, you know something, God's love for you is as great as all of that, that great expanse. And then he turned and of course looking towards California and then New Mexico and out to Nebraska and he finally turned all the way around and he said to his grandson, that's how much God loves you. And his grandson said, you know what that means, Grandpa? And Grandpa said, no, what does that mean? And the grandson said, that means we're right in the middle of God's love. Which we are all the time. Grandpas and grandmas want to share that gift of love. We're called to do so. 
on your journey this week through life as we go about meeting people in your own way invest those gifts and talents of faith hope and love in others and our world will be changed for good and God.